Hi friends, Shay here. So today I am here to do another collab video for you. This is the second video that I'm doing in collaboration with Ashley over at Bookish Realm. I am really excited. So she is linked down below. Make sure you go and check out her video. This is a series where we are recommending books and mo or not books, sorry, comics and manga related to a certain topic or theme. This month we are doing superheroes. Now, I have to be honest and say this is one that I'm not incredibly well versed in and just there is not as much selection in the manga space as there is in the comic space. So definitely go check out Ashley's video. It's going to be very informative, I'm sure, as hers always are. And while you're there, give her a sub, give her some engagement, watch a playlist, do something, because she's amazing and one of my favorite creators on the planet. <laughs> she's one of the few that I like stop and watch their videos. <laughs> so anyways, let's get into these recommendations. So the first one I have to talk about, I think it's a pretty obvious one, and that's Astro Boy by Osama Tezuka. This was kind of the pioneer of superhero manga, and I would be very remiss to not mention this. It was one of the first ones that was brought over to the U.S., and it was just very well received. There was a little anime for it. Like, a lot of things have been inspired by Astro Boy, and it's kind of blown up and gone off on its own. But anyways, Astro Boy is definitely the first one that I would recommend, especially if you want some history in the manga space. And it was just... Like I say, it's so well known at this point that I don't feel like I need to go in depth on detail with this one. But either way, definitely check out Astro Boy. The next two are also pretty obvious ones in the superhero space, so we're just going to get right into it. So first up, we're going to obviously talk about My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia follows Izuku Midoriya, who's a young man who lives in a world where a lot of people have what they call a quirk, some sort of power that is not natural to a human. So some sort of superpower. Sometimes they're really helpful and those are the people that go on to be the heroes of this world. And there are others that are just like small conveniences that would help out at a job or like extra strength to a farmer or something. Most people live pretty normal lives and then there's the hero class. Um, Midoriya has always wanted to be a hero, just like his idol All Might, and All Might has his own secrets, but we're not going to reveal those here because those are spoilers. But anyhow, <laughs> um, when Midoriya finds one of his classmates who does have a quirk, who actually bullies him in trouble, he still tries to jump in and save him best he can, even though he is what they call quirkless. He is just a normal human. He does not have a quirk. But through spoilery circumstances, Midoriya is given a quirk. And from there, we go on his adventures as he attends UA High School and learns how to be a hero. It is a fantastic series. This is one that I do prefer to watch over reading just because I feel like the epic music and the movement does actually help my experience. But this is one of the most popular manga in the manga sphere right now. It's one of the top selling. So I know I can recommend this without any hesitation. And I have read some of the spin-offs, and they are also really well drawn, really well done. Anything in the My Hero Academia universe you will probably enjoy. Um, the Vigilante series I've heard amazing things about. I haven't read anything in that one yet. But either way, you can definitely dive into My Hero Academia and have some fun, whether that's the manga or the anime. This is available through the Shonen Jump app, which you can get through a subscription for $2 a month. And you can read pretty much the whole series. You can read up to 100 chapters a day with that app. So you can definitely get a lot of reading done for very little money if you don't want to wait on library holds for that one. All right, the next one is for my older group of people here, and that's One Punch Man. Now, One Punch Man is all about a man who trains his entire life and existence after an instance happens in the beginning, and he trains so hardcore that he can take out anybody with one punch. And so he's like bored. He wants more challenging people to go up against. And so he actually enters kind of the hero class. And the more he, um, more he's in that hero world, the more people feel threatened by him and his power. And so it's just a really interesting take, a little more grown up than My Hero Academia. 
though both series have dark points to them. And I really highly recommend both. The satire in One Punch Man is definitely gonna hit different for an adult than for like a teen just because it is very satirical in its writing like he's very jaded he just kind of lives his life and you know just wants to go buy discount coupon food and things like that for the most part he wants to live like a normal human but just wants to be able to protect himself so it's a really interesting take on a superhero story so I do recommend checking out One Punch Man if you haven't now the next two series I'm going to talk about are for our ladies for our girls we got to have some girl power up in here. So the first one's going to be pretty obvious, and this is Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon is the journey of Usagi, who is a young teen. As she discovers, she is not who she thought she was, and she has powers, and she's supposed to be defending and protecting the Earth from this other race that her, that she is at war with. They are trying to use the humans for their own purposes, and she is there to protect the humans. Um, there is a love interest. She does have a squad of Sailor Scouts that we meet along the way. And honestly, I personally read this as an adult, so I don't have the nostalgia fueled behind this series, but I can definitely recognize what this did for teens a little bit younger than me who read this young, because this is definitely about empowering yourself and empowering the women around you. And I do think that the core of what Sailor Moon about is great. I don't personally love the execution of it because there are just, I have a whole salty reaction vlog. If you want the specifics of that, I'll leave it linked in the corner, but I can definitely acknowledge what Sailor Moon is and what it has done for the magical girl side of the manga sphere where we kind of have our female superheroes. So there's Sailor Moon. Again, all of these have been pretty obvious so far. This one will probably be the most obscure, although it is an older title. And this is one that I read recently, and it is Magic Knight Ray Earth. Now, this is very similar to the feels that you get reading Sailor Moon, at least for me it did. But I enjoyed this a whole lot better. So essentially, we're following three Japanese teens who end up pulled into this alternate world to be the Magic Knight's to the princess of the land and they are there to protect her. And the way all of that goes down is really interesting. They come into their powers slowly. They have little helpers from the world along the way, people who make their armor, people who help empower them as they empower themselves throughout things. And then at the midpoint of the series, something happens and these girls are sent back to their normal lives. And from there, what happens is they have to face the consequences of what happened in this other world. And it is amazing what Clamp did with this series. Um, it's primarily, if you find the Dark Horse editions, they're in two omnibuses. And the new collector's editions are in, they're really big box sets kind of a thing. So try to find this in the Dark Horse editions if you can, or try to find the singles. I don't, even know where you could find those. But I borrowed this from a friend. So check your library system, see if they have it. And I recommend reading this with so much of my being. Again, I'll leave the video for that one linked in the corner. But I really enjoyed both Sailor Moon and Magic Knight Ray Earth in what they did for empowering our girls. But I do think some of the execution of Magic Knight Ray Earth was a little bit better than Sailor Moon for me, but I do think that's a, I don't have nostalgia for Sailor Moon like a lot of people do, so I'm looking at them as an adult, not as a teen. So I will put that caveat in there, but I do highly recommend checking out both series. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below what some of your favorite superhero mangas are. Make sure you go check out Ashley's channel. Like I say, every time when I'm collabing with her, she's amazing. I love working with her. She's fantastic. And yes, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.